Mr. Mayor McLaughlin. Here. Mr. McIntyre. Here. Mr. Zambach. Here. Mr. Reynolds. Here. Mr. Cravacher. Here. Mr. Mike Lowry. Here. Six members present. Okay, we'll now have an invocation by John Craybacher, Nicolau City Council member. Everybody stand, please. You bow your heads, please. We come before you, to God of all creation, we come before you to welcome you to this meeting. We give you respect and acknowledge you as our creator and provider. It is you who are omnipresent. You are everywhere, Lord. It is you who is omnipotent. You have all power. It is you who is omniscient. You know everything. God, as we begin this meeting, we ask that you would guide our thoughts and our actions so that we may have a successful meeting today. Help us to accomplish our goals while dis dis displaying your character. We pray these things in your mighty name. Amen. 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 Mr. Craybarker, thank you. Pledge of Allegiance, please, if you stand. There's a flag in the back of the room. If you join us, please. The Pledge of Allegiance it's to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome everyone here, thank you for being here. Again, I'll remind everyone, if you have a cell phone, you would please turn it off. I knew I'd catch you there. If you would uh, turn it off, vibrate, we'd appreciate it. And let me see now, action on the minutes, regular meeting on October 5th, 2015. Please. So moved. Second. <laughs> Any questions? Addendums? Changes, anything at all for minutes. Good job, by the way. Okay, if you would please. Mr. Craybacher. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Minutes past six to zero. Thank you. Communications, none tonight, is that correct? None this evening, sir. None this evening, okay. We're now going to city manager report, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, members of the public. I'd like to share with you some of the items on the city manager's report. Uh, the first item up for discussion is the Twin Creeks project there. Uh, the city, we have recorded the deeds. I spent a couple days uh, in the county last week going over that and getting those done. They are in our possession. Well, they're still at the recorder's office. They will be in our possession tomorrow or Wednesday. There's 25 total. Uh, the next steps, this, this is part of it, what's called a community reutilization re re program. It's covered under various sections under the HAV revised code. So it's a program that is just ridiculed with uh, what you can and cannot do. So right now, what I need to do is really learn that program according to the ORC. I'm going to make some appointments with uh, Mr. Bill Hoffman out of Clark County Prosecutor's Office. We need to find out what we can and cannot do when it comes to the selling of these parcels. We don't want to get ourselves into a position where great news, we got them, we sold them. Now we're going to recoup some of this money and then six months to a year later get a big old letter from the county saying that we owe them now money because we did not do the program properly. So uh, step one is done. They are in our possession. Next, next step again is uh, identifying what we can and cannot do. And then once we do that, um, we will start identifying potential buyers and moving on to the next step. But again, just to keep everybody in the loop, they are uh, in our name. And uh, we will make sure we do the right thing. And when that is time to discuss, I will bring that open to a council meeting and uh, inform everyone at that time. Any questions? There is a comment I would like to make. Uh, I think a lot of citizens are under the impression that the sale of the lots will pay off the bond. It's nowhere near any anywhere close to being able to pay that bond off. Just to let everybody know that. There's an assumption <coughs> the number of people that, that that would be used to pay off the bond. Well, it will be used, but it won't be anywhere near enough to pay off the bond that's still left for all the infrastructure out there. So I just want to make that clear to everyone. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Thank Mayor. You, sir. Sure. 
Yes, and I'm sorry. Mr. Before we go on, I want, I want to thank you for taking the time necessary to go through and do, doing this the right way. Over the past couple of years, we've done a number of ways to try to solve this, and always something comes to bite us at the very end. So going through, sitting down, looking over it at a snail's pace to make sure we get everything right is definitely the best way to go forward. And I want to thank you for taking the time to make sure it is done right. Sure. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Any questions on Twin Creeks? Okay. Nope. And moving on with our finance discussion, our finance director, Mrs. Uh, Harris. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, Council, and members of the public tonight. I want to go over our September financial report. Total revenue for the month of September, we took in $280,123.90. Total expenses for the month of September is $299,906.70. Year-to-date revenue, we've collected $3,779,041.60. And the year-to-date expenses are $3,323,801.50. For our income tax, I have a little typo on anybody that has a sheet. It is the figures for September. I have July typed in there. But our total income tax for the month of September, we collected $31,693.90. And out of that, the half percent with our new police levy, we collected $5,920.34. So our year to date for our income tax collected is $815,000. $996.67, and the year-to-date for the police income that we have collected since July is $14,899.04. Second sheet, we have a little bit of a um, p &L on our pool. Uh, the copy that I put with my report is a um, pretty much a little bit of a rough estimate. We still have just an insurance liability that's coming out in November that's due, but so far it looks like we're running about 4400 in the red for the whole season. That's $4,500 loss. But on the books we have um, $1,658.80 total. So we will be doing a transfer tonight on some of our resolutions for the general fund to make a little bit of that coverage, but nothing like we had originally put in. If there's any questions I can entertain on the bus, on the September report. Questions, anyone? Council? Yes, Mr. Graber. Okay, just um, just want people to notice, you know, on the account with um, our attorney, you know, the legal fees was only three thousand one hundred and forty some dollars what we paid out. It wasn't thirteen thousand like it has been of fourteen thousand. And that's probably what it, it should be, right in the ballpark if barring any legal battles coming up. I just want people to know that, that, we, that it was listened to, that was maybe a little bit on the high side, but however, she had a lot of work to do. She had, she, she again, had I, I said this numerous times when it comes to our law director, she's playing catch up, quite frankly, right. from what has not been done over previous years. You know, the Kennedy Trust lawsuit, which we're going through right now, is a very complicated uh, lawsuit, uh, given the nature of the contents of the actual case. You know, so again, it, you'll see these fluctuations. Uh, but again, Lynette is primarily working on stuff that has, should have been taken care of years ago um, that maybe a prior law director did not have time to, to do. So uh, again, she's playing catch up and she's, she's doing a pretty diligent job of doing so. Right, I'm the same. Yes, sir. Hey, question, yes. I have two quick questions. Uh, have we received the new backhoe yet? Yes. All right, because I saw that our, we had made our what appears to be our first payment. So, and my next question is, uh, did we ever get the invoices from our former law director? I mean, we had talked about it last year, but I don't, I don't know if you have, but I know I haven't heard anything since then. We have not got invoice from him, um, and that's about as much as I can say about uh, that. I would venture to say that they may not be forthcoming. They were things that weren't accomplished, weren't done. Yeah. So I think that's what we're going to do. Right. To be quite honest with you. From what, what I know of at this point, right. Mr. Williams, okay? Thanks so much. Uh, anyone else? Any questions for the finance day? Okay. Thank you.
you very much. We appreciate it. And moving on with our city manager report as our service director, Mr. Kitko. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, Council, members of the public. Uh, I just have one update and then one under informational with Mr. Bridge. Uh, Prentice Drive Phase 2 construction is underway. Road has been cut out. Uh, the new drainage has been installed. They will be starting tomorrow or Wednesday with the new curb and gutter and through this week installing the new driveway approaches. So if anyone here in the audience lives on Prentice in that phase or listening, um, to make sure they have their vehicles out of their drive and off the roadway during this time because they'll be running a strain and curb machine uh, the next couple days. And that is all I have. I have an update about the bridge that everybody keeps asking about down by the swimming mm -hmm. pool. I went down last Friday and I ran into the engineer who was down there by himself at that point. And they had talked about, and they were given to you the 16th was the date that they were looking for. They have to cut grooves yet in the cement, and the machinery that is needed for that is not available. So they're waiting for that. He hopefully would open it up sometime this week yet, right. maybe the middle of the week or the end of the week, just to let everybody know that. It's open now. It is open now. I drove over. Actually, yeah. yeah. Signs are down. I actually came in that way and the signs were down up at, is it Musselman? So I came on into town and when I turned the corner come in, the signs were still up, but there was a red truck sitting there who was probably getting ready to kick them out, so it should be open yeah. now. Okay. So there was no problem getting across that, so it looked absolutely beautiful. There's no signs up there. Turned over. The ones down by uh, Twin Creeks are turned over. Good. And I think those on the, on the North Carlisle Road. I did not get over that area. Now I don't know about that. Well, that's wonderful news. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate that. So that's an update. <coughs> that. <coughs> that's good. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I'm seeing all these blue marks on the streets, what's the blue marks for? Uh, well, you'll probably say blue, yellow. It is Premier, the subcontractor that is working for Vectran and relocating the gas meters. They have over about 100, well, about 110 locates. So wherever you see all them blue marks, we're, we're locating near a property that they're looking to do their work in. Okay, so they block off part, like one half of the street, what it looks like that they're doing. Um, they're trying to maintain traffic, which is usually on the side streets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they'll cone two lanes and then block off enough for them to get their work done. Mm -hmm. How long is that gonna be, do you know? Um, they're hoping to be done by uh, December. Um, they have two crews working, and they, like I said, they had about 110 to do. Uh, they're moving right along. I know we've done locates for at least 80 some already. So, and locates are usually only good for 10 days initially, so they're moving pretty fast. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Zan. Uh, I had somebody put green paint in an area of my backyard, and it's a design, and they painted my sewer clean out green. Any idea why they did that? And that who they be, might have been? There might be someone next to you that needs a meter change, and we locate uh, that area. Usually, on, if we locate that area, we'll on the curb. If there's no sewer, put no SS. And then on the back, we'll locate the, the tap where it should be on the main. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Take your time. Ready to move forward? Yes, sir. Awesome. And moving on with our uh, city manager's report is uh, we're actually going <coughs> to we don't have a representative from the fire department there, so we'll have to get the report later. And I'll shoot that out to you guys via email, and I'll figure out why we don't have somebody here present for that. Uh, but there is a discussion point I would like to talk about under the fire and EMS. Um, the job was uh, listing. It said here I would release a list of candidates today. Uh, last week I received a few phone calls and talked to some firefighters face to face. Um, apparently, I'm just going to. How, when we put the ad out on the paper, how we did it is we just call Cox Media, shoot them the job description and then what we want to go on there. They go ahead and put it on monster.com on your behalf. Well, I think there was some confusion because when, when she put it on monster.com, a full-time checkbox was checked. So we did get a slew of applications for that from, quite frankly, people who are overqualified. Um, we got resumes from all over the country. Uh, some of these guys are making eighty to ninety hundred thousand dollars. 
So with that being said, and we have gotten some local applicants. Um, we got one from Springfield, two from New Carlisle that have a New Carlisle address, and then we also have one that did not submit his address, but did have a 937 area code. So we'll just assume he's a local candidate. Um, I think it's probably the best thing for us to repost for a week. So what I'm going to do is uh, tonight after the council meeting, I will go put the small job description on our city website. I will run the ad again from tonight until um, the 20, 7th of next week and then we will see how many new applicants we get based off that um, i will take full responsibility for it at the end of the day it was my job to make sure that was posted correctly um, but again the people at cox media just checked that box so i was not made aware to it till afterwards um, so i want to make sure that everybody who is a local candidate who wanted to apply that maybe was possibly discouraged because seeing that full time I'd like to give them a fair chance to go ahead and reapply. So everything that's listed on here, we'll just hold off for another one. Again, to reiterate, we will post the job opening again for a week and then see what kind of candidates uh, we get from that reposting. Any questions on that? Council, <clears throat> any questions? Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, and moving on with our police discussion. Uh, uh, Ms. Allender? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have here, you guys didn't get a handout, I've got some extra ones up here, um, but just a general idea. There was a total of 56 reports generated um, within the city of New Carlisle. 34 of those reports were taken by a county deputy, 22 of them were, were taken by the city deputy. Um, a total of 66 traffic stops were made here in New Carlisle with 14 citations issued. Um, amongst those, we had seven driving under suspensions. There were two adult arrests made um, last month. And then just being a little bit more specific with some of those arrests and some of the reports that were done, there were three assaults, eight thefts, a vandalism, 19 911 hangups, six verbal domestic violence calls, a vehicle lockout, two calls for a peace officer, two alarms, and seven assists with another deputy. Um, over the last couple weeks, New Calls had several automobile thefts. We do have several persons of interest, and actually, as we speak, the detectives are out speaking with them. Um, no arrests have been made, but they're hoping to have an arrest made within the next couple weeks. Um, other than that, the um, Heritage of Flight Parade Festival without, went without incident. There were no problems that we had from the Sheriff's Department. And then just as a reminder, Trip or Treat, Beverage Night is going to be this um, on Saturday, October the 31st from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. in Clark County. And, um, you know, of course, we urge if anybody finds anything suspicious in candy with the kids and stuff like that to let the Sheriff's Office know. Thank you, Council. Any questions? I have a comment for you. Thank you for taking the extra duty and your associate, if you would pass that on. Absolutely. The extra duty, we do appreciate that. Hopefully, you'll continue doing it. Yeah, and, and we're really trying to use that to implement the, the peak hours, um, you know, based on what's going on in the city. We have our regular hours that, you know, will work regardless of, of crime volume. But we have been trying to stay late at night. I've been staying till 6 a.m. She's been coming in early to try to compensate for some of these car break-ins that they say is happening between 2 and 5 a.m. So we've been trying to make our presence known where, where the crime rates are higher. Again, we appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, yes, Mr. Craig, go ahead. I want to thank, I, I see you guys all over the place. There's only two of you. Uh, and I don't know how, how you guys do it. You know, um, and, and, and the, the business people really do appreciate going in and saying, you know, how is everything going? You know, I talk to them, too, and they, they really appreciate you guys. Well, and you, guys you guys are doing a fantastic thank you job very much. as far as the community policing. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Brick. I would also like to thank you, too. I, I see some of the, I sign the checks when you pull these extra hours, so it actually shows your commitment to actually coming here and, having that passion for police service and protecting the municipality that you in. So we all really appreciate you taking time out of your personal life to dedicate to the city and to get us going in the direction that we're going, the good direction that we're going in, but continue on going in that direction. And we could not do it without you. So my heartfelt thank you for doing that and keeping all of us in your top priorities. You're welcome, thank you. Sure. Anyone else? Again, thank you so much. Mr. Bridge, whenever you're ready. Sure, and moving on with the city manager's report is some informational items I would like to go over. Uh, the first is the COPP program. 
Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Cobb. Mr. Cobb, if you can raise your hand there or try to raise something. There you go. Uh, you put a lot of work into this um, potential program, and you've done a fantastic job in doing so. I'd also like to thank Mr. Rick Lowry, who's not present here today, for going along with me for the Beaver Creek COPP uh, ride along. Um, I think it's in the best interest of the city until uh, that we wait just a short term to see how this is going to play out. My concern is, 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 is two major things. The first one is I want to see how some of this police levy comes in, this police levy money comes in. We're going to pay for this program out of the police levy money. We need to make sure over the next course of these five years that we use this money very diligently and we account for every penny. Um, another thing, major thing that has not happened yet is we haven't started negotiations for the new police contract coming up. I don't know what those rates are going to be. I have not talked to Gene Kelly about this. Probably in the next month we'll start those negotiations. You know, uh, we want to get back to as many as we had before, but rising costs are rising costs. So I think that we should probably wait on this program. I still think it's a great idea. But again, we have to be diligent with this money that we're getting based on this income tax levy. Um, that's my final decision with that. I am always open to, you know, have open discussion about it. But again, we wait February, March to see how this is going to play out. We see how these negotiations are going to go. Then we can see about that COPP program. For those of you in the audience and watching on TV at home who don't know what that is, it's Citizens on Preventative Patrol. And it's basically a citizen action group. Uh, the city would have to supply a car, uniform, pay for their training, pay for their insurance. It's a big upfront cost to the city. It's a volunteer-based program. Um, Beaver Creek has had great success with this. I'm sure we can as well, but we need to make sure, again, our finances are in line before we commit to such a great program. Any questions? Council, any questions? Do it, go forward, okay. sir. A uh, couple thanks out to Mr. Artie Holder of uh, Holder Oil, Mr. Bob Holder of Holder Oil. Uh, he donated uh, soil for the flower beds that we did um, around the cemetery. Next time you're coming down 235, you'll notice big, large boulders around the cemetery sign. Check that out. Um, over the weekend, myself and Ms. Kathy Marshall, who's our water, water utility clerk, uh, came up Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, planted these flowers. Um, it's going to be great this spring when they do go, but um, Mr. Holder had a bunch of soil, so we had asked to take our new backhoe over. So we sold some of his soil, put it in a backhoe, and now we have got some great earth for that. Also, uh, Fab Metals donated the actual rocks that are around that flower bed as well. So um, it's again, it's a two example of, of great businesses here in our town that anytime the city needs help, they don't hesitate, they produce. Um, big thanks to those two companies. And moving on, with the Clark County Security Camera Registration. This is a cool program coming out of the county. Um, I did submit our cameras that we have here in town. Basically, they are going around, and it's for businesses or residents, so you might get a paperwork from them. They're going around and creating a database of all the cameras that they have, and it's for one point to help them solve crimes. For example, um, something happens at Leeds. Well, that officer can get on. It's going to be a mobile app. He can get on a mobile app and find the location of all these cameras. He won't have access to the cameras, but he'll know who owns it and how to get in hold of contact of that person. So he can call, hey, Tuesday night at Leeds we had a break in. I know she had a camera. Can we have access to that data to help solve this crime? So I did um, register the cameras that we have at the city. So I highly recommend that if you have some cameras, or you know of a business or another resident that does, have them reach out to the county and submit those to that program. Again, it's a great tool that's gonna to keep all of us safer in the long run. Do we have a phone number or anything for that, for the citizens to um, I do not have a phone register. number. Do nope. you think we could get one and let them Sure, I will put it on the city website. Thank you. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Um, maybe it's an add-on to that, and maybe it's not. The guy from, we were at Crime Watch the other night. Mm -hmm. The guy from K9 Solutions was there. Jeff Turner, I think. Jeff, Jeff Turner, Turner, yes. And he was going to do something similar to that to the residential cameras. Mm -hmm. You know, at least one of them, you know. And, and post, and somebody can monitor it, you know, on the, on the, um, on a website. You know, I don't know exactly all the details. I don't know if Carol can remember some of it. But. And he's coming back. He's coming back to Prime Watch next time. 
It might be two separate programs because I do know, uh, yeah, I know the officers aren't going to have access to the, what they can see on that camera. It's like if I have cameras in my house. So when they go and say, oh, Randy's house, they won't be able to click on an icon and see what my cameras are seeing. Mm -hmm. They'll just be able to know that I have the camera. Here's my contact information. Call me. I can get them access to this. That's kind of what Je I went and actually did a walkthrough of his business on Saturday. Mm -hmm. or Monday, sorry, uh, last week, and it's before the crime watch meeting. He was talking about it, so it's the same type of deal, but it's through him, not through the county. Yeah. And so, like, he won't have access to your camera. He won't know who owns the camera. Now, his cameras, he will have access to, and I think they're great things. I mean, sure. he sat there and said, "Oh, this one's top of the building," and looked straight down 235, almost to McDonald's. And I was like, "Oh my gosh!" And I could be able to read everything very vividly. So, and that you know, those things help solve crimes. So. They're all there to keep us all safer, our homes, our businesses, our cars, our personal belongings. So if you uh, feel comfortable doing that, I would recommend that you do so. And moving on, we have a planning board update. The planning board approved for the zero, the site plan for Van Crest and New Carlisle expansion. I don't know if any of you have driven past up uh, Van Crest. You see a lot of activity going on there. Uh, they are doing a major expansion to some of the buildings they have. I think it's about four buildings total. You're going to see an increase in square footage. You also see a massive increase in number of beds they offer. That's a huge project for the city of New Carlisle, so I'm happy that moved forward. Um, even more excited to see what the end result of that's going to be and what it looks like when it's done. Um, so very exciting times with that one. A lot of people I don't know don't know the name Van Crest. They know it by another name. Debut. Tell them where it's located. It's so Debut right. Nursing Center, now Van Crest in New Carlisle. <clears throat> Just north, the north part of Mizuno. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hey, Randy, what's the, uh, you said the completion date for that was five years out, I'd say? Oh, no. They, I think I, last I heard of them is anywhere from two to three. Two to three, yeah. okay. So that's going to take some time as well. And is AutoZone still on schedule for? AutoZone is still on schedule. Great. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. Absolutely. And moving on, uh, leaf pickup is back. Hopefully that gets a lot of people excited. I know that they had cut it out of the budget uh, last year uh, for budget, budgetary concerns. Um, Mr. Kitko approached me about bringing it back. Um, I didn't see why we could not as a little hey thank you for getting that levy passed. Um, so you have the schedule. Uh, it's included in the packet right here. There's also a map of the city if you don't know what zone you live in. So please take advantage of this program. Um, we would love to come pick them up for you. Mr. Kitko, they can still place things back in Madison School? Yes. Okay. And then just limb brush. What else included in that? It's just leaves from behind school. You drop off leaves outside of bags. Do not leave bags or any kind of limbs, rocks, material in with the leaves. But you can dump them back there until December. December 21st is the last day. But yeah, you can haul as many leaves as you want back here. We just got done hauling a bunch of the dirt out of the way so we could uh, accompany those. I know we've done so in the past. I'm assuming we're going to do it now. But can we put this on the city's website along with the map as something that residents sure. can go to? And yep. So they know. Thank you. I am going to back up one because I, I missed the most thing I was excited about talking about. Uh, number six on the information items, construction in the city update. Again, you're probably driving around town, seeing a lot of activity going on. Speedway is no longer there, but there's a big fence and a big, well, what I saw, a big hole in the ground now. That's where their tanks are putting in. Um, also. The Van Crest expansion is valued about $5 million. Speedway is about a $3 million investment. We also have already Holder going for an expansion. And we also have AutoZone going on as well. I cannot remember a time when I look back in past planning files of a singular time when there's been so much economic development going on in this city right. at the same time. Jet and, electric. I'm sorry. Heating and air. Jet, Jet mechanical. He's done. Out. He's over with. Then we have one of the newest businesses right here with us. Uh, Sheer Divas. Divas. We'll That's get to right. them in a minute. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So enjoy it right now. This is a positive time for the city. These people are not going to come here and build and invest millions of dollars if the city was a dead city. Be positive about that. Welcome to change. <coughs> At the end when all this is done, we're going to see a huge improvement. I'm excited about every one of these projects, no matter if they're big or small. It's a sign of life in our great town. Um, so yeah. Uh, Speedway, uh, tomorrow or Wednesday, they are going to be hauling in the tanks. And from what I understand, it's an awesome sight to see. They're huge. Uh, one 12,000 and two 10,000 gallon tanks. 
Uh, they'll be hauling in on semis, uh, setting them down in that hole, burying them, then they'll float them. They got to fill them up pretty much uh, about 90% of what with water. So if we do get a rain event or something, they actually won't float. Go to the podium. Um, like something with air, air type of device, but they just told me to pass that on, and there'll be a bunch of uh, higher ups coming from Speedway to watch this. Will there be a, a problem as far as the hose from our? We're going to provide the water. I take it. They're going to use a tr uh, truck and company to fill from the pool hydrant and truck it up, so we won't be able to shut down the, the oh, okay. street. Just wondering about that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, Howie, if you don't mind, uh, we talked about this right before the festival, but I just was, wouldn't mind if you give everyone an update on Speedway's uh, continued cleanup process of what's you know still left down on the ground. Um, there's all there is is really some. Um, stuff that's attached to the soil. Uh, there is nothing in the drinking water. Um, they have pulled their unit out during construction. They are, however, maybe either bringing that unit back in to finish up the job or putting in a permanent smaller system that will be part of the new building uh, so that you don't even see it. It will be there permanently um, as long as the structure is there. But I can tell you all that dirt that they just dug out of that hole where the tank field will be was in the area um, near the other tanks that leaked. They did have labs in right before construct, uh, demolition started and the dirt passed. Uh, did not have any uh, issues with it. However, Speedway stepped up and still hauled that dirt to a Columbus landfill which is certified to take um, foul dirt. And then what they'll do is they, I guess they lay it out, wait for if there's anything else on it. Uh, to dissipate and then they will sell it. So they took an extra step that was actually deemed clean dirt, but um, so that told you that they've already got a lot of stuff stripped off of the soil. Great. Thank you. Anyone else? <coughs> Construction in the city, I think we're still on. No, we're done Anyone with that. Any questions? Ready? Go ahead, sir. All right. And the last one I have for my information items is voting location update. Um, I did reach out to Clark County Board of Elections um, about having them at Trussell Chapman Funeral Home. First off, I'd like to give a thanks to Mrs. Dunbar for offering her location. I did speak with Matt at the Board of Elections. Um, I, he did not return my phone call as of yet. Uh, for this year, it's probably too late, but we're looking at next year and moving forward. He's going to reassess the property and get back to me on it. The major thing, and I said this last council meeting they look at, is ADA compliance. They go so deep into it that they look at the grade of your concrete as well. So there's a lot of points that they have to hit for a facility to be approved for a voting locations. But again, I'd like to give a thanks to Mrs. Mrs. Dunbar. And as soon as we have an update for, from the Board of Elections, I will communicate with that with council so we can get it out to the citizens as well. But we are trying to have people vote for the city of New Carlisle matters within the city limits of New Carlisle. So it's unfortunate, but we are working on it. Thank you. Yep. And I do believe that's all I have for the city manager's report. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Council, any other questions for Mr. Brown? Mm -hmm. Okay. How about anyone from the audience? Yes, sir. Seem to do any good for citizens to call if they like the board like I did today and get complaints. I don't think that ever hurts. I think I think that maybe the more voices we have, the quicker they work on it. I'm sorry. Is there no structure in New Carolina? Well, I mean, elementary school what well, is, but it's a security reason for them not having it there. Why is it not at Tecumseh? It is at Tecumseh High School. His question is, is why is it at Tecumseh? It has to do with the logistics of how the building is set out and where people enter and exit to actually vote. At New Carlisle Elementary, the hallway that goes to the gymnasium, other kids will be in the hallway. There is no separate entrance to go right into the gym. I've got neighbors that have said, well, we're just not going to vote. Sure. You could always absentee if you wish. You could probably still do that. You could always go over to Springfield if you wish. Is this building not compliant? It is, but again, I made a call on it, he made a call, we've had a number of people that have called. We're all very disappointed that we don't have it in the city of Nukola. And they didn't seek our opinion on this at all. No, they, they did just not. did it without our without our They had excellent they, uh, Yeah, not one question was sent to us. John, from what we understand, they had a committee that went around, they had a group of people 
from the election board that went around and looked at different places in the city. Yeah, I think it would have been acceptable for Trussell Chapman, but unfortunately they declined at that point to be able to utilize that building. So then now Mrs. Dunbar has stepped forward and said you can use it in the future at this point. But it's too late now for them to change. They probably already sent out their literature telling people where they need to go to vote and so forth. Mm -hmm. So that's what's happening. Just say, handicapped people can go to Governor's High School and vote. And let the rest of us go to the Catholic Church and vote. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way, sir. That's, that's the Board of Elections. So it's out of our hands at this point. Yes, ma'am. I asked them if I had sent an absentee ballot in, how I would know that they got it because when I go to my thing and put it in, it says accepted. And they said, well, you'd have to look on the web to see if it was on there. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't on there, I was just out of luck. Yeah. Which didn't impress me a heck of a lot. I understand. We're, we're very disappointed in the way things have been happening, to be quite honest with you. Anyone else, any other questions on anything before we continue? Yes, sir, Mr. Uh, if we're ready to go on to the next one, I would like to ask if it's all right if we had a representative from Sheer Divas get up and speak a little bit about her new business. Sure. Sure. If they would go up to the podium and introduce yourselves and then speak from there, if you would. Podium's in the back, please. Business business at this point. And I will say these ladies came in to visit me when they first opened their visit and they are a ball of fun. <laughs> so go see them. They will definitely keep you entertained. Well, my name is Angel Bird. I am, as you said, new to New Carlisle. Um, myself and Shannon. Go ahead. I'm Shannon. Um, go ahead. You, what's kind of hard doing it? Okay. Place, but <laughs> well, what we wanted to do, we wanted to get here. She found a location. And she, you know, it's real kind of homey to us. And that's kind of what we're about. We're all about a community setting. Um, her and I both have worked for corporate um, for many years, uh, 25 together. Mm -hmm. And um, we just kind of thought that we want to be more of the community oriented and kind of stay within the community and, you know, just do things with the community like the festival that was a blast. and. That's basically what we're about, you know. We're not high priced. Um, we're very, very, you know, reasonably priced on everything. We're just here to, you know, kind of serve you guys. I want you guys to come in and check things out and look at it. And we did remodel a little bit. And nothing major, but yeah. You want to tell everyone where you're located? Uh, we are in the Bobo Shopping Center, right behind of Studebaker's. And you also want to tell them, do you? Possibly work on men and women? Yes, we work men, women, children, does not matter. If I come in to you, you won't give me pink hair, will you? No, no. <laughs> only if you ask for it. She does need some blonde, though. Yeah. I got my hair cut today. Yeah. So yeah. It's not pink. It's not pink. Oh, you did get your hair cut? Yeah. It's from them? Yeah. I'll turn around, show everybody what kind of work they do. Right. Look at that. All of their hair. Yeah, we're full service. We offer waxing, color, highlights, and we're doing a lot of specials right now. For the first couple months, we're doing 50% off of um, any chemical services, and all haircuts are going to be $10. So we're just doing kind of a welcoming and wanting everybody to come in and see us. Well, I would, I would say that you had a lot of probably scouting locations and going to different municipalities and talking to different communities and talking to the citizens and other business owners, and we just say, Thank you very much for choosing New Carlisle to start your business. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. All right, any other comments from anyone at this point? <laughs> okay, we will continue then. We're now at the comments from members of the public. Would anyone like to speak this evening? Members of the public, here, please go up to the podium, please. Nancy Lubanovich, 505B, and you were talking, uh, Ms. Harris, about the income tax on the front of the sheet. Yes. Where is that coming from? The, the income tax. tax. My the... income tax? What is this? Right here. The very first one that 
$31,000. Well, any of those four that you, you know. They're from the income tax that we collect from um, the Isn't returns it? that we get every month. The business, business and business. some residents, yeah. Okay, that's some withholdings. Some withholding? Some withholdings. You withhold on a monthly basis? Well, probably what's from, coming in is businesses. From business. From probably business. what you're saying. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not a big quarter. It's strictly business. Could be. Okay, that's what I was trying to figure out was where you're getting it from. Okay. Thank you for your question. Yes, sir. Can you go to the podium, please? Especially for the residential ones. John Schweitzer, Gail Woodwright, New Carlisle. Uh, on the way up here, I live in the 100 block at Gail Wood, which is the first block. I drove down the second block and come across that way, and there's a house down there I couldn't hardly believe. It's one of the biggest houses in New Carlisle on Gail Wood Drive. I don't know if people have seen this thing or not, but it looks like it's about a four or six family hotel. How did anybody ever get a permit to do that? Go ahead, Mr. Bridges. First off, that house was there way before I even worked for the city of New Carlisle. But to give you an idea, our set, that is owned R7. And that's high density residential. So you're looking at tiny houses on tiny yards. Well, to give those people the same right that everybody else has in the city in order to expand their house, they can't expand out onto the yard. So they get to expand up. So you look at the maximum height of the houses of Galewood, I couldn't tell you the number right off the bat, but since they have no yard to expand this way, they expand this way. I know exactly the house you're talking about. It's a two-story house, looks like it's about 30 foot tall. It looks like it covers the whole property. I don't know anything about a petition, but normally how that would work is they would fill out a permit to expand their house. Um, whoever the planning director at the time should have, should have denied the permit, and then they go in front of what we call the Board of Zoning Appeals. They go to variance if they need one um, from the zoning code. Um, but there's multiple things that go into that, but basically you're looking at you know, some of the things they look at is your lot coverage, all right? So, um, for example, if you live in medium density residential, it says that your 30% of your yard can be covered by your principal structure and your accessory structure. All right, so once you, you can be at 29.9% and you're under that 30% coverage. Well, at, uh, up in R7, again, it's still based off a of percentage, but since they went up, it's not additional coverage. That house has been up for years upon years, but I understand what you're saying. It does kind of store, stick out like a sore thumb, but oh, it's definitely been in the right. Yeah. Well, other people up in Northwoods, if you want a second floor, now's the time to do it. Match the rest of the house over there. Let's get two stories. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Anyone else like to speak? Anyone? Okay. Thank you very much. We'll continue. Are there any reports tonight? None this evening. None at all. Okay, we'll go into resolutions now. If you would please, Mr. Cobb. Resolution 15-06R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution providing for the permanent transfer of funds from the general fund to the debt service and enterprise funds of the city of New Carlisle. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Yes, Zamba. Move we adopt resolution 16 at 15 06 all. Second. And an explanation of this resolution is it's a general housekeeping uh, resolution we kind of do every year. And it's just what it says, it transfers money out of our general fund to help pay our, our debts. Any questions? Any more council? Good call for the vote, sir. Mr. Craybacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Passes six to zero. And when you're ready, if you continue, please. Resolu resolution 15-07R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution providing for the permanent transfer of funds to the general fund from various other funds of the city of New Carlisle. 
Mr. Mayor, move yes. to adopt resolution 15 07 R. Second. Does Mr. Mark Lowry? Mr. Lowry, yes. And an explanation of this resolution is uh, another general housekeeping one we do yearly uh, to transfer funds in and out of other funds to uh, balance out. Any questions on this, please? Anyone? No? You would, Mr. Collier? Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Kraybacher. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Pass six to zero. Thank you. Resolution 15-08R, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution providing for the permanent transfer of funds to the enterprise funds from various other funds of the city of New Carlisle. Mr. Mayor, move we adopt resolution 15-08R. Second. And an explanation of this resolution, again, just another housekeeping uh, resolution to, uh, this one is for enterprise funds to help negative balances. Thank you, any questions on this one? Anyone? Okay, can you call for the vote, sir? Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Kraybacher. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Pass six to zero. And whenever you're ready, if you go into the ordinances. Ordinance 15-42, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of propane gas. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Moved, we adopt ordinance 15-42. A second. And an explanation of uh, ordinance 15-42. Uh, this is a yearly uh, propane ordinance we do. Um, our cemetery uses propane and we uh, went with Pharrell gas. Um, it is $1.25 uh, per gallon fixed rate, which is very important. Um, and it's a reduction of $1.09 from our previous year. Yes, please. Uh, Mr. Bridge, I want to commend you on uh, going back and getting us a discount. I know when we had talked about it originally, uh, we had not looked into it, and happy we did because we're saving some money now. So, thank you. Absolutely. Anyone else? Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. We call for the vote, please. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. <coughs> Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Craybach? Yes. We pass six to zero. Thank you. Ordinance 15-43E, which is an emergency ordinance, introduction, public hearing, and excuse me just a moment. <coughs> Let me start that over if I may. Ordinance 15-43E, uh, emergency ordinance, an ordinance amending the estimated resources of the city of New Carlisle that will be available to appropriate for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2015 and declaring an emergency. Mr. Mayor, move we adopt ordinance 15-43E. A second. And explanation of ordinance 15-43E. This ordinance will allow us to balance with our debt payments uh, due this month. Uh, the interest and principal pay payment was slightly higher than, than estimated. Any questions? Mr. McIntyre. I, I have a question on this and that the ones um, well, anyone that has an emer or the emergency attached to it, can you explain why, I mean, if people don't know why it says an emergency, do you declare an emergency it, for things? How we, in there's two ways we can introduce legislation um, via ordinances. One is just a normal ordinance, and that requires two reading. So if you notice on the Pharrell gas one, it just says introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. No, public hearing and action tonight. If we introduce them as an emergency, by our charter, we are allowed to only have one reading. Um, it takes a six-person vote to pass it, whereas normal ordinances require just majority. This will also be effective immediately and forego the 15-day waiting period. So as soon as they pass this, it's effective immediately, and then we can go and do what we need to do with the auditor's office at this point. Thank you for bringing that up. Thank you. Anyone else? Any comments? Yes, Mr. Craven. But there's a deadline to that. There is a deadline. Uh, the, the bill is due. We just got it. So that's why we're doing the house cleaning to okay. increase our estimated resources. And then the next one is to increase appropriations so we can get the check paid on time. Okay, there you go. Thank you. Anyone else? Can you call for the vote, sir? Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. 
Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Craybar? Yes. Pass six to zero. Ordinance 15-44E, an emergency ordinance also in action tonight. An ordinance amending the estimated resources of the city of New Carlisle that will be available to appropriate for the... Am I reading the wrong one? Yeah. Okay, let me start. Pardon me for that. Ordinance 15-44E, emergency ordinance action tonight. An ordinance supplementing certain appropriations in the New Carlisle City Ordinance 1511E and declaring an emergency. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Move we adopt ordinance 15-44E. Second. Mr. Reynolds, you're just right on tonight. That's good. Okay. Nice to do it. <laughs> Explanation of this ordinance. Uh, seeks approval to add additional appropriations so we can be able to pay off the exact amount of debts this year. Any questions? Anyone? Any questions on this? Okay, if you call for the vote, please. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Craybar. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Pass six to zero. <coughs> ordinance 15-45E, also an emergency ordinance in action this evening. An ordinance amending ordinance 15-12E regarding appointing a city manager and fixing compensation for the city manager and declaring an emergency. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Make a motion to adopt ordinance 15-45E. Second. And an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, ordinance 1512E uh, placed me as the uh, city manager with a probationary period of six months uh, in that we had decided what my rate of pay will be. Uh, upon further analysis of this, we had to go and I had to take a reduction due to our current union agreement that says um, any member of management can't get 3.6% or more in a three year period uh, as a raise. So this is that reduction in pay that I'm taking is a reflection of that. Any questions, comments? Yes, Mr. McIntyre. Thanks for your help these past few months. It has been easy, but you've, you've been there for us. It has been easy? Has not. Oh, okay. not. thank you. I thought you not said it's been easy. Not. So it has. It has been easy. What are you talking about? It's been great. great. Yes. <laughs> Anyone else? Any comments? Okay. You call for the vote, please. Mr. Mike Lowry. Uh, all right. Yes. Uh, all right. We'll see. Uh, Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. As usual, Randy, you push the envelope, but absolutely yes. <laughs> Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Craybock. Oh, wait a minute. If it's an emergency, you have to have all six. All the power. Hey, Mr. Craybock. Here it is. Yeah, We're all good power, powers. Sir. Let's keep it like that. <laughs> I like power. But of course. Absolutely. Thank you. Is that you. a yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I could say something. Sure. Please do. Uh, the first six months of this job is actually, it's, it's, it's been stressful, but it's been absolutely wonderful um, in so many ways that outweighs the, the bad. Um, I've loved this city since probably the second day of me being here. Coming from Cincinnati, it's, it's a big place compared to little old New Carlisle. And I love the fact that a handshake means more than an email here. I have a great team around me. These, well, this gentleman right here, fantastic at keeping the council meetings in line. These guys right down here to my right, our service director, Ms. Harris. I know I thanked you guys enough, but I could not have got through this first six months without them. And it goes on down that table as well. Um, so those of you who have stuck behind me, thank you so much. I look forward. I, in so many ways, I feel like I'm just getting my feet wet. Um, I inherited a city that had some issues, but we are moving forward, quite frankly, at a faster rate than I anticipated six months ago when I was talking about this. But it seems like every week I learn something new. I make a new contact, and it seems like every week we get by and there's one less issue we have to deal with. So it's only a matter of time before this city is back 100% on track. I think that so that we have so much construction going on in town is a good indicator of that. You know, our fire department, I know it's the elephant in the room. It was a mess. That's on its way to amend. Twin Creeks is about behind us. We got a few other issues where we got to get, get over, but we're on the right track. Bear with us. We're getting there. 
One more thing too, uh, Ethan, you did do a great job on that uh, propane ordinance as well. I'd like to give Mr. Lindsay some credit to that as well. So Mr. Lindsay, thank you for bringing that to our attention too, but we have to give credit where credit is due. So thank you to you two gentlemen. Uh, but all of this we did work and we did get a cheaper rate and that I think should be the end result. You're the one that made the call, so good job. <clears throat> I just wanted to say also that uh, you have seven council members that are behind you. Uh, we've all thank you for all the hard work. You've had to go through a lot of difficulties. Uh, police department getting a levy pass. Thank goodness for the levy pass. It's going to help tremendously. Uh, fire department, things we've had to come back. We've all worked together, hopefully, on this. And it's working out. You can see it with all the construction going on in the city and things will be resolved and thank you for all the hard work and i thank you seven as well we do. absolutely all right we're all finished with the order anyone else like to say anything if you would please no okay audience anyone like to say anything before we continue okay we're going into other business now first thing we need to do is uh we need to mr rick lowry is absent tonight so i need a motion please mr mayor uh move we Excuse uh, Councilman Rick Lowry. Second. Would you do that, please? Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Krabacher? Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mr. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Zambach? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry is excused. Okay. Other business? Do you have other business? Anyone would like to bring up? Anyone here? I would like to do an informational situation on the sign at Smith Park. We've had a lot of controversy about <coughs> painting of it. I was white for a while. Uh, that's, that's called putting a primer on. You have to primer it first. But I had a lot of people asking me about that. They thought we were done with it. Uh, it's looking pretty good now. But Studio 10 is working on the board that goes up behind that that had all the lettering on it and talked about Smith Park. Once that's finished, that'll be put back up and then hopefully it'll be finished and we will have a finished product. We've talked about it for weeks here and it's finally gonna be accomplished. Hopefully next week or two we'll have that up and then it'll be completed. So again, any other business, anyone at all? Anyone in the audience? Anything they'd like to bring up? Thank you for your hard work on it. Oh, you're welcome, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Sometimes you have to just grab it by the horns, as the saying goes. So we got it. We're getting it done. You put horns on the sign. Horns are on the sign. There would be big oh, horns yeah. on the sign. Oh, yeah. Everybody's so literal. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Anyone else? Anything? Okay. Uh, would you like you to go ahead and read sure. your other things, please? Uh, once again, a reminder: there's an open door session every second Tuesday of the month at 3 p.m. at the city building. It's a chance for the citizens to meet face to face with a rep from Congressman, Congressman John Boehner's office. Uh, it still remains from John Boehner's office until they find somebody who actually wants that job. Then it'll be somebody. <laughs> it'll be there till next year. Yes. Okay. Ethan said he was. Okay, what? Doug, what does Ethan say? I heard you were Oh, Lord, now. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Drug take back ban. Drug take back ban will be uh, here in town on October the 24th from 9:30 a.m. 9:30 a.m. to 11:30 a.m. during the Run for Coal Warriors event. Do you have any idea where they're going to be located? Where does that run start from? Oh, the van is at the fitness center. It's a fitness center. Okay, it'll be at the fitness. Okay. It takes the trail. I was the first I ever heard of the runner. I'd have more information on it. Well, okay. it starts at the fitness center and goes down the trail. Yeah. Basically. And we'll, and we'll have two people to assist with 235 mm -hmm. while they cross. And then we'll have street, uh, some of our crew walk the bike past Thursday or Friday. Yeah, Thursday and Friday. We're trying to get the um, graffiti off. Graffiti and machine and blow the path off. Yeah. And the last thing I have on the other business agenda is. Uh, a plug for Tecumseh Varsity Football, October 23rd, 2015 at 7.30 p.m. It's a big game against Tip City, asking everybody to come out and support the Arrows for this big rival game. So there's obviously somebody amongst this city that doesn't like Tip City, I take it. 
It has nothing to do with that. I think that we need to promote our local sports um, and schools a little bit better and have that connection. Amen. I agree with that totally. May I just say one more thing? I forgot one thing on the sign. Smith Park sign and back on that. I wanted to give a attaboy to the Hatcher family. Hatcher, they have paid for the sign that is not up there yet. That's being done by Studio 10. So again, I want to thank them and give them they're due for that. Thank you for Except saying that. All well, the hatchers paid the money that needed to be done. Yes, Mr. McIntyre. On something with the Tip City Tecumseh game, Tip City just announced a, a few weeks ago that they're leaving the CBC to go to the big conference with Centerville and, and Kettering. Yeah, the GWAC conference. And mm -hmm. so I think it'd be great if we could give them a nice goodbye from the CBC by embarrassing them a little bit on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else from anyone? Yes, sir. We were told when we were in a meeting with the uh, Mr. Mayor, move we adjourn. We're going to miss you now. I think somebody will jump in to fill that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for being here.